Um, welcome everyone to worship today. Uh, we're glad you're here and we're glad to be on Zoom. I'm glad to be back, even though I didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> and welcome to all those that join us um, as this is posted later on the internet. We're glad to, to, um, to, have, and to have you all with us, even though um, it won't be as interactive later. Um, just I'm glad you're back too. The, there is going to be the community dinner this month, but it's not going to be the way it normally is. It's going to be a drive-through community dinner, and um, Bev is going to be coordinating the food and helpers. We're going to, because the rules for us to do dinner of any kind means we have to wear gloves and masks and keep our social distance. So, um, so, that, so that is what we'll be doing at the end of the month on the 30th. And if anyone's willing to make signage, I thought it might be helpful if we had some extra signs out because for folks who are really looking for a meal, they may not get the newspaper because it'll be in the newspaper and they may not know about our sign out front, which will change today. So if you are good at making signs or could make some where we could put them up, um, please let Bev know. <laughs> well, Tracy let me know that we should pray today for Adam and Kiera because they are expecting a new little one. So we will add them to our prayers today, and um, that is their great good news that they wanted to share. Uh, that means John's a grandpa. <laughs> they're getting ready to do that parent thing. Um, they just won't be dog grandparents like, like some of us still are. Um, breakfast prayer will again happen this week at 7.30 on Wednesday. If you'd like to join us, please, we welcome anybody that wants to come. Just let me know, and I'll send you a Zoom invitation. Are there any other announcements that I have not remembered? It is quite possible. Hearing none or seeing no hands, I invite uh, John to share Patty's um, something. Patty wants a video she wants to share from the children. <laughs> wow. Awesome. <laughs> That's a great. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Yay to all of our young people. Those are great things you've been doing when we can't see you. And you've been having fun as well as doing some work. Thank you. Thank you, Patty, for sharing all that and for all that and Becca and Amy and everybody that, and Brittany that put those videos and pictures together to make that for us this morning. Okay. Um, if Tom can make sure everyone's muted, which it looks like they are, then we will open with prayer. I think um, John will be, uh, pretty soon we'll have our, um, we'll share the screen again. So let's pray. Holy and awesome God, we thank you for 
a new day. We thank you for a day where we can rejoice, for it's the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we rejoice at the pictures we saw of the children doing what children do best, helping, learning, singing, being creative, doing things with family and friends, Lord, and, and giving thanks to you. So that is what we come today to do. We come to be your people. We come to be your people gathered in worship of you. Lord, we need you to do that. We need you as we come in this time to help us over Zoom to be your worshiping people, to be your body, Lord Jesus, to be filled with your Holy Spirit as we enter into this time together to give you glory, to praise you and honor you. Do all that now. Amen. Okay, please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> I'll be reading both parts. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. What if we aren't full of joy or feel we have no voice? Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. What about the pandemic or the riots? Where is the gladness there? Know that the Lord is God, that he is who made us, and we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We come as we are, God's sheep, God's people, as we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, we can give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. We give thanks that God's faithfulness continues through all generations to everyone, even to us here today. We will sing the hymn of praise, number 385, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Please join me in the prayer to confession. Holy God, we confess we aren't able to navigate our world alone. We need you as our good shepherd. We confess our tendencies to be self-absorbed and limited in our compassion. And yet, there are so many sheep in need. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, 
that whomever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and invited to share his saving love with the world. A prayer of illumination, let us pray. Great shepherd of the sheep, may our eyes be on Jesus, our hearts and minds open to your word our ears listening for the still small voice of your Holy Spirit, that your will be done in us as we live our lives today. Amen. The first scripture passage this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 1 through 10. The word of the Lord came to me, mortal prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophecy and say to them, to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Ah, you shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed, feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak, you have not healed the sick, you have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. So you were scattered because there was no shepherd, and scattered they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep were scattered and they wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth with no one to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord, as I live, says the Lord God, because my sheep have become a prey, and my sheep have become food for all the wild animals, since there was no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves, and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus, says the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will demand my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding of the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from the mouths so that they may not be food for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, I'm going to give a little introductory so you can leave that there, John. I'm going to do a little introduction and then I'll get to that. Uh, for the next several weeks, we're going to be walking through the lectionary in the Gospel of Matthew. Um, Pastor Bill Moore very nicely and thankfully filled in last week and he started us out. Um, he actually started with the very last part of Matthew. That's what the lectionary was last week. And for those of you that aren't familiar with lectionary, it is the listing of four scripture passages for each Sunday during the year. And they divide these up into three different years, cycles. We are in cycle year A. And the part of the Christian year we are in today is called ordinary time. And when I saw that name, I thought, well, that's a rather strange, since we are actually, I guess, in a rather extraordinary ordinary time in our lives and in our country and in our world. And I did a little research about why it's called ordinary time. And the English name ordinary in ordinary time is intended to translate the Latin term tempus per annum, time through the year. Merriam-Webster translates ordinary as of a kind to be expected in the normal order of events, routine, usual, an ordinary day. Indeed, this has not been the year so far of a kind to be expected, nor this time, just this time through a year. Well, what are we to make of this ordinary time? Why is God in the tumult and the pandemic? I'm sure people ask these questions in Jesus' day as well. And I'm going to be reading this morning from Matthew 9, 35 through 10 through 8. The country of Israel has been overthrown, occupied, and ruled by Roman kings and governors for 70 years by the time Jesus began his ministry. Starting at uh, verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless 
like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out the workers into his harvest field. He called his 12 disciples to him and he gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. In some ways, this occupation, if you want to call it that, um, had become ordinary or normal. But notice how Jesus described the crowds, these people of Israel. They were harassed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. Now that's from the New Jerusalem Bible. Later he tells the disciples to go nowhere but to the lost sheep of Israel. There was nothing good about this normal life without a shepherd. In God, we learn, does not take kindly to having his people, his sheep, being harassed lost and living without hope. What had caused these problems for the sheep? Where were their shepherds? I don't know. Sometimes I think in this passage, it's not the sheep that are lost, but the shepherds that are lost, but that's another sermon. Shepherds are often words used for the kings and leadership over the people. In those days in Israel, the people lived under the shepherds of Roman occupation, which meant heavy taxes collected by tax collectors, and oppressive governing. Bill talked last week, um, I really loved the fact that he lifted up the emperor worship. It was very common with the Roman emperors. They considered themselves gods. And they practiced, in that practice, they were very sometimes arbitrary and very power hungry. Um, they, they were only concerned about themselves and, um, and could sometimes cause devastation to the people. You remember King Herod, don't you? The one who, after talking to the Magi, sent people, his people, looking for baby Jesus, and by the way, gave instructions to kill all the children aged two and under. I wouldn't call that being a very good shepherd. However, these were not the only shepherds that the, that the people had. They had the priests and the religious leaders who also had a responsibility to care for the sheep. In the passage, thank you, Tom, for reading that passage from Ezekiel, we hear God speak through Ezekiel to his people. They were the scattered sheep of Israel. They were in captivity in Babylon at the time. And yet, God still wanted to be involved in caring for them. And, and God, interestingly, expected the leadership, the shepherds, those who had captured them and the religious leaders, to protect and care for his people, the sheep. Well, that chapter offers some really sharp words and a not a very happy ending for the leadership who allowed the sheep to become food for wild animals and even food for them. They had clothed themselves with wool from the sheep, but they did not heal the, sheep, the sick. They did not strengthen the weak sheep. So God says, I will have to rescue my flock. Well, it's years and years later now, and Jesus comes to his people, the people of Israel, and he finds that they are again miserable. So Jesus says, so Jesus becomes their shepherd. Did you notice what he does? Um, this statement, that uh, this part, this um, chapter 9, it goes on to 10, is actually sort of a summation of the last few chapters. He starts in 4, Matthew, and tells he's going to come and tell, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and then he sort of does a summation here of what Jesus has been doing. And Jesus has been going to the cities and the towns, and wherever he went, he offered his sheep the good news of the kingdom of God and then demonstrated it right there with them. He cared for these sheep. He cured every disease. He cast out the demons. 
He healed their sickness. And then he told his disciples, now pray. Where prayer is needed. The pe these people are a harvest waiting for God and God's workers. And here are these people hungry for good news. And Jesus is the only one at work proclaiming the kingdom. But Jesus is going to remedy that in the next few verses. Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of God, and that's what the disciples were also going to do, right? He asked them to proclaim. But what does that mean? Well, even in the midst of the Roman occupation, even though nothing had changed politically for them, the unclean were no longer unclean. The demon-filled were released from demons. The sinful were forgiven. Those who had diseases were healed. Jesus showed them that God had indeed become their shepherd and was not against them. Jesus even offered them a, a kind of a healing, a freedom from the ruthless religious shepherds who would impose difficult traditions on them in order to try and make them holy enough or good enough so the Messiah would come. That's kind of funny, isn't it? God had sent, God went ahead and sent Jesus before all the traditions were kept perfectly. God sent Jesus in the midst of his people while they were in captivity in their own country so that he could offer everyone salvation. And one thing they needed to be saved from was this um, narrative, if you want to call it, a false narrative that the religious leaders of the day were um, producing. That salvation would only come when they were good enough. Jesus, uh, just a few verses before this passage, he is called out by the Pharisees um, because he is eating with the tax collectors. And that is a no-no. The, they were the sinful enemies of the good Jew. And Jesus' answer to them is, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Go and learn what it means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come not to call the righteous, but to call the sinners. That's in Matthew 9, 12 and 13. Jesus didn't care much about his own reputation but the religious leaders cared a lot about their reputations. Jesus was willing to be lumped with the sinners in order to offer them the grace and the mercy that was found in the kingdom of God. The Pharisees wanted to stand far away from the sinners, AKA sheep, and to point their fingers and say, you're wrong, you're sinful. They never wanted to get too close, not close enough to get to know them or to love them or to find out what their needs were. Our Jesus was different. He came close. He sat right down and ate with people. He went up and touched those harassed sheep and healed them. He cast out the stuff that was wrong, the, the, the unclean spirits, in order to offer the mercy and the healing of all kinds of ailments they had in their hearts, in their minds, and in their soul and body. And then Jesus called the disciples, and he sent them out to be laborers in the harvest, didn't he? They were the very ones he had just told they should be praying. It's interesting, isn't it, that Jesus gives them authority to bring care to the sheep? And he tells them they're going to drive out demons, they're going to heal sick disease and sickness. And last week, um, in that scripture that, that um, Bruce preached from. It said Jesus had all authority in heaven and on earth. So this is kind of like a foretaste of what's to come. Jesus is here giving his disciples authority to work among the lost sheep of Israel. And in that authority, they're to go with a peaceful, remember he always told them to go and bring peace wherever they went and offer the good news to those people who are feeling oppressed and forgotten by God. But I would offer you today that there are people who appear lost, dejected, or harassed. That time was not limited just to, to Jesus' time. However, we may not look at them as sheep without a shepherd. That may not be how we see them. Expect them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We may expect them uh, to... Um, to, to, to make better choices, to uh, you know, change the way they live, to fix their attitudes, you know, to show a little more effort. 
because it's so easy to stand and point fingers. And maybe we need to ask ourselves a question. How does Jesus see these people, whoever these people are, that you maybe came to in your mind, that look like sheep without a shepherd? How does Jesus see them? Maybe he's calling us to pray to the Lord of the harvest for workers. Guess what? As we pray for Jesus to send workers, Jesus may call us the ones who are doing the praying. To me, this was the lovely iron in this passage, that this wondrous way that God works through Jesus in our lives. People often say prayer changes things. Have you ever heard anyone say that? It's, a, it's a very common. We say it ourselves. And God often does work through the prayers to change situations. And I also believe God works through our prayers to change and call us. Why couldn't the other shepherds bring healing and wholeness to these people? It seems from the readings in Matthew, no one else really cared for them. They wanted to use them to get more money. They wanted them to be their minions, to do their labor for them. Or they didn't think they were important enough or clean enough or good enough to be bothered with. So they cast them aside. But Jesus saw them and loved them, harassed and dejected as they were. They didn't have to be perfect first. All they had to do was turn and trust in him. He didn't come with the expectations that they could get their act together and then he'd offer them the kingdom. Instead, he saw them as sheep in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. They needed the kingdom of heaven first for healing and restoration of their hearts and their minds and their bodies. In our world today, we're having some extraordinary happenings. They just keep going on. In some ways, it's not that much different from Jesus's time. And there are all kinds of shepherds out there today. But there are still people who are feeling harassed and helpless or even dejected in a variety of ways. So what can we do? What are we called here at Jaredstown Presbyterian Church? Well, the first thing Jesus said to do is what? Pray. Pray to the Lord of the harvest for more laborers. And really, those laborers, I looked up the word, it's the people who actually get out and do the harvesting. And in this case, he was looking for some people to do like he was doing, to people who are going and serving and caring for the sheep. So as we pray, we may find ourselves that we're coming out of this time of, of being quarantined and locked down. We're starting to open up. They keep using that terminology. And in doing so, we may find that the work of caring for others requires sacrifice. It requires sacrifice to be someone's shepherd. Like the community dinner that's coming up in a couple of weeks. It's not going to be our normal community dinner. We're going to have be handing out bags of food instead of coming in and serving people food. And there may be a sacrifice of our personal luxury of walking about without any mask or without any gloves on. We may have to sacrifice that. Because instead, we, to do this, are supposed to wear a mask and gloves in order to keep others safe and healthy. But we can join Jesus as we labor in the harvest if we do that by caring for his sheep. I think we can. And in these times of tumult around in our country and even in other countries in the world, people are taking all kinds of sides of issues that are out there. There's racism, there's protests, there's law enforcement, there's destruction of property, there's violence, there's looting, and there's more that, that I haven't thought of. And it can be easy for us to stand and point fingers and not want to get involved. But I believe Jesus calls us to pray, and then to come close, and to get to know the people who are involved, and not to be someone who rushes to the judgment. I believe Jesus invites us to be his people and to offer care and concern. And one way that we might be able to do that, this is just one way, there might be many ways, is to be good listeners and to try and understand 
what the hurts of the sheep really are. Kind of like Jesus who sat down with those tax collectors that had dinner. I do not think this will be easy. That is why Jesus sent us his Holy Spirit to give us his love, his joy, his peace, and his patience as we are called to labor in this kind of harvest. Although both of these types of activities and all these activities may be difficult, they're not nearly the sacrifice that Jesus endured on the cross in order that everyone should know God's love and care and receive eternal life in the kingdom of God. So they can be free and healed of all the harms that can affect the sheep in God's care. I think we probably ought to pray. Would you join me? Holy God, your scripture is just new every time I read it. And I pray for us as a congregation that that is true as well. Here is something set 2,000 plus years ago. And yet, Lord, when I read it, I felt like I was stepping right into your world with you. I felt like you had stepped right into the world with us and that you were no stranger to the world we are living in at all. Oh, Lord Jesus, we desperately need you, our shepherd of the sheep, and indeed, you call us to pray. You are very specific. So Lord, we pray this day for, for these laborers, these workers in the harvest. Lord, how do you see a harvest? Well, that's the thing you have to enlighten us about. How to be your workers. How to see these sheep as your harvest as the sheep that God is calling to be his. Lord, you know how that works. You know, even if we don't yet. And you will teach us how to be your people that are called sometimes to be your workers just like you called your disciples. One minute they were praying, and the next minute you were sending them out under your authority to go care for people that looked lost and looked like they were harassed. And some of them fell hopeless. Hmm. Lord, would you help us? Would you help us to have good listening ears, for that is one thing we can all do. But Lord, sometimes we have to leave aside what we've already decided. Kind of like those Pharisees that already decided those tax collectors and those sheep were not worth their time. They didn't want to shepherd them. Lord, we may have similar viewpoints, and it's hard work. Thank you for being in it with us. And that you can do all things well, that means you can help us to listen. Even when we may disagree, to listen to each other and to listen to others we may not even know yet. But that you may put in our path this week. Because sometimes sheep feel harassed because they've never been heard. I thank you, Lord, for you were always listen. You incline your ear to, as scripture says, and you incline your ear to all those that call upon your name. So we invite you to help us to do that. And for that, to be others in our world, Lord, not just our church, but other churches all across this nation and across this world that will be listeners, compassionate listeners. So Lord, this day we also lift up those who may be feeling like sheep because things are wrong with them in their bodies and they um, maybe they can't fix themselves. They can't just put a Band-Aid on it and make it better. They need help. 
from shepherds who have a care to care for them. So this day, Lord, we, we lift up Bruce, who is evidently in the hospital this day. And we can't tell because he's, he's muted right now and he can't sh share with us what's going on. But we know you know Jesus because you are the great shepherd of all the sheep. And we know that you know exactly what he needs this morning. So we lift him to you and we believe, Lord Jesus, that you are bringing your, your wondrous grace and your healing and your mercy to Bruce this morning in ways that only you know that he needs. Thank you for the doctors and nurses are there, Lord, and we invite you to lead them and guide them even as you are pouring out your spirit of healing on him. Thank you, Lord, that when we lift our prayers and faithfulness to you, you answer them. You, you answer them sometimes. You answer them so well. We find ourselves going out to care for people we didn't know we wanted to do that. So I thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers this morning, for being God who hears. And Lord, this day we lift up Kira who, and Adam who are expecting. And Lord, we invite your blessings on them and on this new little one. We ask for 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 health, good health over this new baby. We ask that everything would go well with the pregnancy, Lord, that your watchful care would um, take care of them all and prepare them for this new adventure of being parents. We bless you and thank you that we can follow along with them with our prayers and care. Lord, this day we lift up Jill, who is um, found out she has a brain tumor. Lord, nobody wants that diagnosis ever. So Lord, we lift Jill to you this morning and we gather up all our faith with her to believe you and to believe for doctors that can help. And Lord, that you bring your amazing grace, the same power that you sent out the disciples with, you have for Jill this day. You have for Bruce. Lord, you have for those that call on your name this day for help. So I thank you, Lord. I thank you that power has not diminished this many years later, that your kingdom of heaven is at hand for the healing of that brain tumor and sending it right out of Jill, that she would have it no more. Lord, we also lift up Brenda Carper, and she was on our prayers because we thought she'd already had surgery, but she hasn't had it yet. And Lord, they found an aneurysm, so now she not only needs a, she needs a, a valve replacement, but she has an aneurysm. So Lord God, we lift her up because she's going to have open heart surgery this coming Wednesday. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your power and glory is great for Brenda, and it pours out on her even before she goes into that, that surgical room, that, that operating room. And Lord, that even before the doctors are there, you are already at work in her on her, through her, in her heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your healing grace for Brenda. Thank you, Lord, that there's healing grace in the kingdom of God today, this day. Hallelujah. Lord, we also lift up um, Paul um, Crumley's mother, who had to go back into the hospital, this time for congestive heart failure. So, Lord, we lift her to you. We don't know if she can have family with her right now. So Lord, we thank you for being with her in this time. It's difficult, Lord, for people who are in the hospital right now. They feel alone. We thank you that Bruce can, can bring us all into his hospital room this morning as we pray over him and invite the kingdom right there. And Lord, we pray that for each person in these hospital rooms, whether they can hear us or not, for your kingdom come and that your good and healing will is with them. Thank you, Lord, for being with Janet, uh, Ruby's sister with the leukemia. And we lift her to you, Lord. And Mary Lee Linton, who is um, dealing with her leg. And Lord, we lift up Jean, who is still struggling against the blood, uh, the multi, multiple melanoma. And Lord, we know that your power is great. And your, your healing grace is great in any of these we've named, even the ALS that Kevin Sarin is struggling with out in California. We bless you, Lord, that the kingdom of heaven has not gone away. It is still at hand. And we proclaim it this day 
for each of these people who are in need of you, Jesus. We thank you. As we proclaim your name, we pray in your name, praying the, the, the prayer you taught us from so long ago that is still our Lord's prayer. And we pray along. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is that time when we remember and thank you, God, for those that have brought their offering and sent it in and did it by way of computer and it never passed through this particular offering plate. But it comes through the offering plate that is uh, your grace and mercy, God. So Lord, you offer us the opportunity to give and to give, to give of ourselves as your workers in the harvest, to give of our gifts, the gifts and talents we have that we get to share we do it in so many ways as a congregation. Lord, you offer us us from our, our, as our tithes, our offerings, our monetary gifts to you and your work in this world. Even the community dinner that's beginning again this month. So Lord, all of these we lift to you. And by your glory and grace, we praise you that we can be givers like you. That we can sacrifice out of what looks like our whole pool of, of gifts, but we know in our hearts that everything came from you. And we lift them to you and we offer them to you and we thank you and bless you for what you will do with these and that your kingdom that will come and is coming and is here. Amen. Let us say together what we believe using the Apostles' Creed this morning. Would you join with me saying what we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn may be a little newer to you, but I really love the words, so I hope you'll bear with uh, me and us this morning as um, thank you Sherilyn for our music and as we sing
as you get ready to leave this Zoom, I invite you to not let the storm shake your inward calm. To remember the kingdom of heaven is at hand so we can be calm. We can walk in any storm because our Lord, the shepherd, the good shepherd of the sheep is with us. And he invites us, if we're willing to listen, to be good listeners for others and to invite our calm to be their calm as we listen, as we sacrifice, as we minister. In the name of God, our shepherd, in Jesus, our good shepherd too, and in the Holy Spirit who shepherds us from within. Amen. Blessings to you all this day. Tom's going to unmute you. He will. I know he will. It isn't personally muted themselves. Right. If you are muted, then you are muted because you wanted to be muted. <laughs> I just want to say thank Good you to morning, Tom. Bonnie. Good morning, everybody. I just want to say thank you for Tom for getting me in here. I've had computer problems, and I'm on an old computer, and it was a mess, but thank you. Uh, he's been getting pretty good at that tech stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to take any credit. It was <laughs> oh, Bonnie ahead. was patient and kept trying. That was great. Yes. Congratulations, John and Tracy. Thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. That's exciting. Oh, goodness. That's my phone. No. Let it go out. Want to go out, see? Come on, out, see?